Hi there! I hope you're enjoying the Better Learning Conference so far. I know that I am. Now pay attention. I am Thomas Erickson, the author of the book Surrounded by Idiots and the upcoming book Surrounded by Bad Bosses. Let's talk about leadership, shall we? Within the next 10 minutes, I will give you three really important insights and also three sincere warnings on what to do and what not to do when it comes to leading others. I took on my first managing position at the age of 24. I was a really good sales guy and I said, take me, which they for some reason did. That, my friend, was a bad decision. The results I produced could be described in one word as catastrophe. I didn't know anything about leading people. I went in there and whatever the staff came to me with, I said, well, fix it. Well, how about this? Well, fix it. Well, how about that? Well, fix it. There's a problem here. Fix it. It's a, it's a client shouting at the counter. Fix it. We can't uh, deal with uh, the schedule for all the, all the group here. Well, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. One day I stood leaning over the shoulder of one of the private uh, uh, equity advisors, let's call her. And I looked at her schedule and it was loaded with client meetings. Really good. However, one thing was missing. Time for lunch. She had no time for lunch until next Friday. She looked at me with horror in her eyes and said, please don't tell me I have to fix it. After pondering this question for a while, I told her, well, I guess you have to anyway. After about one year, I started to realize this isn't working. So I went to my boss's boss. Take me out of this equation because I don't know what I'm doing. And he said, you better stay put, Sonny, because your boss is even worse than you. He is not even here. This is insight number one. Selling and leading is not the same job. Even though I am a specialist in one thing, doesn't make me a good leader, which is a complete different challenge. You knew that already. Why would you put yourself through all of this? I mean, you might have to change yourself. Ooh. Which is insight number two. You have to know why you do it. You have to understand why you put on the management cap at the first place. Simon Sinek was right. Without a good reason, it's all gonna fall to pieces. That is just the way it is. Without a really good reason, it's gonna be too difficult. It's gonna be too hard on you if you don't know why you are there. During my leadership trainings and workshops, I usually ask people, why are you here? Why do you have a managing position? Scarily enough, about 1% has an answer to it. Some of the answers are actually good. To contribute, to make a difference, to see people grow. Wow! And then you have the not so brilliant answer. The power, the perks, the money. My husband told me, my wife told me, my kids said I should do this and that. The worst possible answer is, of course, I don't know. I suspect that some people just didn't have time to get away when a question came. Not good enough. Why did I take on this challenge at the age 24? Excellent question. Because I have met this woman and I have moved 1000 kilometers to live with her. And of course, I want to impress her with a new position as the tiny, small, little manager at his bank office. Is that a good reason to deal with 13 other people? Not good enough. But I was 24 and I didn't know better. I'm so sorry. How do I know that didn't work? Well, as you know, when you leave your job, they're gonna gather in the coffee room, sitting down, giving you a present, wishing you the best luck for the future. Well, we sat there, we had the coffee. I didn't have anything. They didn't bring me any gift. I gave them a plant and I said, thank you for, for kind of, you know, having me here for a year and a half. It didn't work at the end of the meeting. One lady felt really bad about the situation. She said something like, well, it turned out a little better at the end. You know, it was horrible, horrible. 
The HR department in the bank, they called me up and said, hey, would you like to take this personality assessment? This little um, analysis of who you really are. Maybe it could help you out a little bit. Yes, I'm willing to learn. So I took it and then I got myself a little book about myself. Wow, so full of aha moments and also several really painful oh no moments. You see, this is what people saw when they met me at work. But I didn't know because I never looked myself in the mirror. Uh -huh. Insight number three. In order to be a really good leader, you have to understand who you are and how other people perceive you. Why is this important? Well, that brings us to warning number one. If you neglect your self-awareness, you will never be a really, really, really good leader. It won't happen. Forget about it. We know from psychological studies that people with a strong self-awareness are more fulfilled. They have stronger relationships. They are more creative and more confident. And they actually also have a higher self-esteem. But that is not all. They perform better at work, they are better communicators, and when they hop on a career, they will be more efficient as leaders. Uh -huh. Because excellent leadership is a communication process. A communication is based on social skills, and social skills is based on self-awareness. And self-awareness is what makes good leaders. Never forget that. The biggest challenge with social skills is, though, it works the same way as with humor. Everybody think they have it. Between you and me, we know they don't. Did you know that according to a self-assessment study, 85, that's a lot, percent of all drivers are better than average? It's the same thing with self-awareness. According to psychological studies, 95% of everybody think they have a high self-awareness. When challenged, it turns out it's between 10 to 15%. Conclusion. 80% doesn't know what they are talking about. Warning number two. Don't assume you know everything or that your ideas always are correct. Which leads us to warning number three. People usually know more than you think. People usually know more than they think. Therefore, in an efficient leadership, never be too hasty in providing solutions just because people come to you with questions. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. Why? Well, of course, you want to show empathy. But that is not the same thing as putting all responsibility upon your own shoulders. No, 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 no. Those things are not connected. In elderly care, the staff usually don't help the elderly too much. Well, why not? By helping them too much with things they actually can do by themselves, they take away their dignity. And sometimes it can actually strip them from the will to continue. You don't want to do that to your staff. No, you want to do better. Much, much better. It makes them passive. It makes them dependent. It makes them dependent on you. What you want is a group that works excellent when you are not there. Not just when you are there. So be careful with answering questions too quickly. What you instead want to do is phrase the following question. If you couldn't ask me, then what would you do? Eight times out of ten, your employee will actually have the answer. There you go. Let's summarize all of this. Insight number one. To be an excellent specialist does not necessarily make you a good leader. Insight number two. You have to know why you took on the challenge or else it will consume you completely. These days, it's more difficult than ever to lead. So please make sure you know why you are there in the first place. Insight number three. In order to be a really, really great leader, you have to work 
on your self-awareness. Warning number one. If you neglect insight number three, you will never be a great leader. Warning number two. Never assume you have all the answers. Regardless of how great and fantastic and lovely you are, and I'm sure you are, you will always be in minority. That is just the way it is. Warning number three. People usually know more than both of you think. Write this down. If you couldn't ask me, then what would you do? I promise you, the result will surprise you. Thank you and cheers.